across the whole Gulf Coast and that's why people are breaking out like this. And I've seen rashes early on in this. And everybody's saying, you know, as far as the authorities go, nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong, it's not related to BP. Well, this wasn't going on before BP got here. I mean, here we're having to go to doctors all over the place for skin problems, upper respiratory problems, you know, stomach problems. I mean, everybody's exhausted and they're like, oh, well, you're depressed. I'm depressed. I'm not depressed. I have a beautiful family. I own two homes. I mean, all my vehicles are paid for. Why would I be depressed? I'm not, I'm not struggling like most of the people down here. That's why I can step up and really fight for the people down here is because I'm not struggling. So why do I feel crappy and why am I breaking out if it's all this other crap? That's peroxide. And I did the same thing that I'm doing now when the back of my legs broke out. Um, the salt, uh, Epsom salt and baking soda baths. And then when I got out, I would dry off, let it air out a little bit. And there was 27 before. It was bad. Um, and then I would come and I would spray the, the um, peroxide on it. And then I followed it with alcohol to stop the peroxide from eating at it because the peroxide eats at it, you can feel it, it's gross. I've never had to deal with anything like this before in my life, but a friend of mine studies natural medicine and um, I'm real thankful for her. The salt, Epsom salt and bacon soda bass pulled like even the small ones. Everything stopped as soon as it started doing what she told me to do and of course taking my antibiotics. But obviously it must be in my system or this wouldn't be happening. When did the breakout start? Like, what, you were out on a boat, right? Before you got the um, incident? It's like, I'm out and stuff. It takes a few days after I'm out before this happens. I don't, th I don't know if this has anything to do with necessarily being out on the boat. As I'm here 24-7. I've been in this stuff since day one. And I think that we've all been poisoned, to be perfectly honest with you. I really do. I'm going to go through a natural detox to try to get all of what they've put in our bodies out. I mean, we've been breathing it, sleeping in it, running around in it, sweating it, bathing in it. We get our water spot in the river. So, I mean, it's just... Are you hearing stories of other people? Yeah. I had a girl send me um, photographs and she had um, small ones from her elbows down on both sides and then bigger ones all over the fronts of her legs and small ones speckled down the back of her legs. And she had ran on the beach one day with her dogs and the next day woke up really, really sick. She's been in the hospital with fluid on her lungs, a collapsed lung, all kinds of stuff. I didn't trust the opinions of the doctors here in the area. Why is that? They don't want to get involved. Why do you think they don't want to get involved? <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. Court, years, 20 years being called in as a witness. Who wants to do that? Who wants to do the right thing? You know, if it was their kids somebody fed poison to and we were the witness, they would want us to stand up in court. But instead it's our kids that someone's feeding poison to and these doctors that vow to do no harm turn their head the other way. The physician that diagnosed me with staph is a skin disease specialist way, way inland. And when he diagnosed me, he told me that if um, it was to get worse, because I had three knots, nine knots, and 27 knots, one, two, third day from Sunday 
till Tuesday. Well, Tuesday I was back down in Plaquemines. So I went to the local clinic because it turned into 27 knots within 24 hours from 9. Every 24 hours it was tripling. 3, 9, and then 27. It was the weirdest thing. So I went to the doctor and because um, I wanted an antibiotic shot. The first doctor didn't give me the shot. He just gave me back from my mouth and I wanted the shot. So um, the doctor comes in and she comes in and glances at me and goes straight to the bar and sets her paperwork down my file and says, you have scabies. She didn't take a second look at me, put gloves on, get close. I didn't even turn around and show her the back of my legs. I was facing her. I had two small spots on the side of my leg. And whenever I, yeah, I turned around and showed her and tried to show her and she was like not interested. Just less than interested. It was, it was scary for me because I already knew what I had and I felt like if they're misdiagnosing people because they don't want to get involved, do no harm, you are doing harm. Because you're treating them for something they don't have and then they're going untreated for what they do have. I don't get it. They're still spraying us. They're still gassing us. I mean, what are we, a science project? Was this done on purpose? I ain't gonna go there in conspiracy theory. I'm sure it was an accident, but whatever. It doesn't matter. You don't poison 35, 40 million people, how many is across the Gulf Coast in the four states? I mean, come on. And then the stuff's in the rain. I mean, I don't know. You're scared to... You can't live life like you normally would live life. Everything's around the oil spill. You know, you're fighting off all these chemicals. There's chemicals all over the place. You're fighting, you're overloaded with chemicals in your body from being here this whole entire time. I mean, it's just, it's about accumulation. Next thing you know, you have some kind of crazy bacterial infection. I mean, it's just, it's, it's awfully suspicious that everybody was fine, and all of a sudden, we have sick people all over the place. And the only thing that's changed that I'm aware of is the BP oil disaster, which surrounded our peninsula. We might as well have been on a boat sitting in the middle of this stuff. We are. We were. I think a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people don't get that, that it was on both sides of this peninsula and the bottom. It was completely around us. We were in the middle of it. And that was burning it, spraying it, the whole nine yards. We were in the middle of it the whole time. I wasn't in... Um, panic mode until I read some of the health effects from the components in the crude and the stuff that we knew was in the dispersants. That's when I went into panic mode. I knew that and I was in panic mode for about a month and a half. You know, and I finally realized there's nothing that I'm going to be able to do to stop these people. They're just going to poison 40 million people. You're, we're going we're gonna to see it. Mark my word. We'll see it. You're going to see people long-term illness from this. Hundreds of thousands. Not everybody's going to get sick, see? You got the people with your real good immune system, and then you got people that got cancer patients, people with AIDS. I mean, is this just going to wipe them all out if they get any dosage of this? I don't know. I just don't feel like all those things were considered in this situation. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Хорошо, подберите все вместе. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Нет, нет, нет. Emergency. 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 Emergency.